Welcome sisters to the orientation series for the 2022-23 masterclass. Remember what we do is that this is a platform through which we teach the annual masterclass series every year about 12 months or so. We bring some brothers and sisters from across the world, ministers of the gospel, you know, people who are not yet ministers, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. They are brought together into a classroom. Pastor Grace and I are used by the Lord to give them an intensive one-year experience that it, it takes about 10 lessons a week. 10 lessons a week and you know plus or minus about 48 to 50 weeks of intensive training and then after which they are graduated and commissioned to serve the Lord and so by the grace of the Lord on the opening day April 1 Pastor Grace and I had an introduction an overview and then yesterday uh, Saturday morning and Sunday morning and Sunday afternoon she is done two more or three more on her own and so for me this will be orientation note number two for me and the idea is to give those who are coming to the master class a fairly good idea of what to expect that's what the orientation series is all about and by the grace of the Lord is going to go until next weekend and after that we're going to the teaching and Father in heaven, by your spirit, we ask you to speak to us. Let the blood of the eternal covenant avail for everyone who is appointed to be part of this class. Father, we bless you for answering our prayer. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen and amen. I remember, brothers and sisters, there are various platforms through which we do the master class. One of the platforms or the main platform is a classroom on Facebook where people are admitted. You, you apply on the website www.kingdombooksclub.com and then when you apply the applications are collated and you are admitted and you are admitted into the classroom. There is also another platform called the Yes Course where you can do the program on your own. The issue with the Facebook classroom is that that's where the, we do the central project. So we have the teachings daily, then we have mentors, we have people doing the assignments both on video and, and, and on the text. And then, but on the yes course, which you you can also apply from at the website, you do it at your own, at your own pace. It's designed as a long distance auto program that you can do at your own pace where you are. If you don't like social media, go for the yes course. And then we have the you know face uh, we have on YouTube the True Kingdom Life channel where you can do it if you are the video the visual type go to True Kingdom Life channel and watch the videos and do the assignments as comments under the videos. Then number four we have the live blogging class which is this one those who can blog along and you blog along each course that comes through or that we're doing you blog along to show you understand it after which you do the assignment or the assessment at the end of each we have a few other platforms if you are the audio type you, you go to the daybreak with the king that is as ideal for those in the usa they wake up 4 a.m central time and 5 a.m eastern time and they do one hour class prayer and a study and then by the grace of the Lord, you can also do it by, if you are the type that is very celebrate, you love to read, you can just go to kingdombooksclub.com and read the, the e-books that are on the site and study at your own pace. And you know what? Anytime you study, you do the assignments after each lesson. And at the end of each book, you do the course impact assessment. And it's all designed. The Lord wants to make sure that nobody is with any excuse. The various ways you can do the master class on your own and at a pace that suits your circumstance. And I have good news for you. Over the past several years, what the Lord has been doing is to help us to look at the Global School of Ministry as an ongoing project leading to something, an institution that is going to serve the body of Yeshua worldwide, all the continents of the earth. Right now, we're serving all the six known continents. We, there's footprint of the School of Ministry in all six, and people are 
studying through the various platforms of the global school of ministry but what we've done at this stage is the very next stage which is very vital and that is to begin to look at the curriculum assign uh, credit loads to them assign a mechanism whereby you can do a certificate program a basic certificate program do an intermediate program or do an advanced program or even in the future do a degree program all these things we are working on taking all that the lord has released for the something courses almost 50 courses the lord has released you are looking at how do we assign them and make sure that everything you need for the level that you are comfortable with and the level you can you know you can apply yourself to by the grace of the lord that's what we are working that's where we are now but for those who are in the master class for 2022 23 a few things we want to discuss today my second orientation note we call it the spiritual compact of kingdom culture if we are going to live together if we are going to labor together for a period of one year people from different backgrounds and experiences different locations across the world it is important that as the lord has brought us together by spirit into this program we have some basic you know what you can call fundamental principles that undergird our relationship number one the issue of unity of faith the bible makes it clear that we need to come to a place where we all apprehend and buy into the vision agree on the core purpose for which we're brought together by the spirit that this program is free of charge absolutely free i don't know any program in the world where you're on full scholarship you get the lectures free of charge you get the course content free of charge the 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 the, the, the ebooks free of charge the video free of charge the mentors are available to support you i don't know of other programs in this category with this level of uh, 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 impartation that goes on and so it's important that we agree on certain things so that we don't it doesn't become like a city without walls which anybody can go in and out and do whatever he likes you see the lord values unity of faith we are told in proverbs 29 18 where there is no vision the people perish but he that keepeth the law happy is he and then what type of thing does the lord want us first corinthians chapter 1 verse 10 now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Yeshua, that you all speak the same thing, that there be no divisions amongst you, that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. And Amos 3.3 3 says, can two walk together as if they be agreed? That's a question. You see, we need to agree on what should be the ethical basis. What is the spiritual compact that should undergird us? And so remember also that in the kingdom, it's always important to have ethical boundaries, you know, as, as ethical codes of conduct, rules of engagement in the spiritual, in the, in the world that people are supposed to agree on for the period that we are together. And so it's important that we work together to create the right environment through which you know what the lord wants to do can be done and for that reason we believe that if we all subscribe to basic kingdom spiritual principles it's going to be good for everyone what are those principles number one is the principle of agape you see it's the pure love of god that has brought us together we are brought into this family of elohim by love his unsurpassable love and that love which we are told in John 3, 16, for Elohim so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, having brought us into his family by love, we all need to love him back, and we all need to love our brethren together back. John 13, 34, 35, a new commandment, I give unto you that you love one another as I have loved you, as he loved us that you also love one another by this shall all men know that you are my disciples if you have love one for another he says the way to know his disciples is the love pure holy love pure love uncomplicated no no nothing unseeming there true love is what has brought us together that is what the principal officers the director of studies the visionaries and the mentors have all subscribed to and that's what has kept us all these years and if you are coming in we say to you you know what you are signing it to be part of a company of people who 
understand that love is the DNA of the kingdom, is the king and his kingdom, and we are required. Everything we do must be in love. Whatever that is not of love, as First Corinthians chapter 13 says, is no use. Then it's important for us to know that the the, the people who the Lord are going to use as resource persons are here because they are responding to the love of Elohim. If you are coming, you too sign on to that love, pure love, uncomplicated love. Number two is holiness. You see, Yeshua, our King, Jesus the Messiah, He redeemed us from the hand of Satan, from the power of sin, from the power of the world, from the flesh, the human nature, and blessed us with the gift of righteousness. He clothed us with the gift of righteousness, and He requires us to be holy unto Him with no complication. So, men and brethren, First Peter chapter 1, 15, 16, But as he who has called you is holy, be ye holy in all manner of conversation, because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. So as the Lord has brought us together here, let everybody make up your mind that we will sustain the time we are in holiness. We don't want to see things unseeming, things that are not right in any shape or form. And we say to everyone, just keep your vessel. Keep your vessel. Don't regard the classroom as social media and then begin to mess up in word, in content, in conversation, in lifestyle. No. The Lord redeemed you and the power to be holy unto him is in all of us. Number three is unity. The high priestly prayer of our Lord in John 17, 20 to 23 is for us to be one as he and the Father are one. Therefore, in the kingdom, unity is very possible by his grace. It's in religion that unity is not possible because people are seeking preeminence, they are quarreling, they are looking for who to pull down to take their position. The kingdom sky is too wide that two beds cannot collide. There are no two destinies that can collide in the kingdom. So let nobody come to begin to do funny things to, to create disorder and discontent and begin to do all kinds of, you know, false witness accusation against people in order to gain advantage. We're not looking for people who are going to gain favor by niching, snitching on others. No, let's walk in unity. Let's walk in the understanding that everybody has a lane, everybody has a pathway, and everybody will manifest by the grace of the Lord. So there's nothing to compete about. We rather have enough to complement one another. Run your lane, extend your hand like the building of the wall of Jerusalem. We can all help one another. And Ephesians 4, 1 to 6 makes it clear that we can have unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Brothers and sisters, remember the words of Psalm 133. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It's like the oil that ran down Aaron's head onto his bears and flew to his body. For there the Lord commands the blessing. So we want to walk in unity. We also hear number four for service. Both the visionaries, director of study, the principal officers, they have made up their mind in mentors to serve you. And they are here to support you, to serve you. Service is one of the DNA of the kingdom. In the book of Matthew 20, 20 to 28, the Lord told the disciples, don't be like the heathen who are looking for those to serve them and they go to sit like kings on thrones. He said, no, roll up your sleeve like he did and serve the people. That's what we are doing here. It doesn't matter whether there's any attack on the health or strength or whatever, we have no nothing, a lack or whatever, those things, we've come beyond the place where any of those things can stop us. Paul says, none of these things move me. We're here to serve the saints. It is love that motivates us. And the principal officers, the mentors are also here to serve you. And we, when you come into the class, you connect to that same spirit of service. Serve the Lord. Serve other brethren. Serve one another another and you are not diminished if you make yourself available to support other people who are struggling i'm not talking about in exams i'm talking about in helping them to apprehend the things that you apprehended number five we all make a commitment to seek first the kingdom and its righteousness matthew 6 33 we seek first the kingdom and its righteousness all other things shall be added unto you that's what keeps us going we trust the lord 
that as we make him our primary focus and his kingdom assignment, which is empowering the saints for the work of ministry, he said, pray in the Lord of the harvest that more laborers will come in. And here in this platform, we, we don't just do praying, we also do by his grace the work of service. And what do I mean? Every year we are open for the Lord to use us to touch lives. And there are several training platforms. When you total up the number of people, you have an idea how many people are being brought into the kingdom service every year. So why are we able to do that? Because we're seeking for the kingdom and its righteousness. We're making the kingdom business the main reason why we're alive. And that is why the Lord preserves us in spite of all the arrows of the enemy, everything the enemy has thrown the sink at us. The reason why it's not succeeding because we're not here to serve our belly. We're not here to serve ego. We're not here to build human empires. We are here on kingdom service, putting the kingdom, the king and his kingdom first, and his raising man power he will use for the final harvest. The sixth thing is consecration. No one can do what we're doing without consecration. That is laying ourselves at the altar of sacrifice for the Lord to use us. So also the director of studies, if you have an idea what she goes through, and yet you can see it on her face with all consecration and the other principal officers, you know, the mentors, these are all consecrated to serve you and brothers and sisters to fulfill the mandate of, you know, sparking authentic kingdom culture, you know, making it a, 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 a global phenomenon authentic kingdom culture not christian religion so consecration is what the law uses to get us there number seven we require everyone in the master class to engage in clean communication whether you are chatting you know in the in an inbox or messenger on whatsapp or whatever or whether you are posting things on your page, make sure your communication is clean and pure. It is not proper to see how people debase, you know, the values of the kingdom on social media. Men and brethren, Ephesians 4.29 says, Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of a defying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Don't go and learn the ways of the world and speak filthy language, corrupt language, and all manner of things going on in your page and people doing all manner of things on your page. No, if you have been part of this class, please keep a clean space. Keep a clean environment around yourself and let what comes out of you to other people, let it be what is a define, what is healthy and strong. Number eight, deliberate engagement. We commit that everyone in the class should be engaged. If you're in the blogging class, blog along. Don't just write amen. No, blog. What did you learn? If I say any point, maybe what I said in point seven or six or whatever, you know, say what you learned from there. You're also in the classroom, blog, I mean, write the assignments to show that you understood. It's not amen. Amen doesn't mean anything. Hallelujah doesn't mean anything. What did you learn? You blog along, you, you make sure that you are truly engaged. Also, engage with your director of studies, engage with the uh, registrar, engage with the mentors assigned to you, because it is what will show that the class is vibrant. It's not good to be static in a class. It's not good to be incognito in a class. You're not, you know, doing anything. No, the Lord doesn't want us to be people who are not bearing fruit. Bear fruit in the class. That'd be good. Number nine is communion. During this training, there'll be various opportunities for us to probably meet life face to face. It's just that this pandemic has kind of, you know, turned things upside down. Otherwise, there are a number of ways we could meet. And we can't rule it out that it's still possible. In the summer this year, we're going to have the commissioning service of the 2021-22 masterclass. It's going to be on a date to be announced, possibly in July or August. You know, in the next few weeks, you know, the announcement will be made and it will be on Zoom, most likely. So if you are one of those coming newly into the class, come along and see the commissioning of those people. But we are also trusting the Lord. The other platforms, for instance, January of every year, the International Ministers Fellowship, which is a sister network of ministers, it has an annual conference called Open Gate in January. 
open gate, second weekend of January. And so if everything is okay, we might meet live there in London. And if you're interested, let us know in time so that we can send you a new letter of invitation. And also, that also International Ministers Fellowship a sister network. It has a conference in the UK in July. That's UK chapter, South Africa in October, Zimbabwe in October, and then Nigeria and some others, you know, like Zambia, you know, they have their conferences. And if you are near any of them, you know what, it may be wonderful for you to let us know that you like to participate. And then the commissioning service of the 2022-23 masterclass, if the Lord tarries, and this word has become so important, if the Lord tarries, you know what? The graduation will be in summer of 2023. But as you know, nobody can plan long term again. If the Lord tarries, all the things you see, they, they kind of show that the things are coming to a head in the human experience in the earth dream. Number 10, spiritual transformation. We say to people, what's the purpose of coming to a class like this if you haven't come with your whole heart? with your whole will, with your whole emotion, with your whole mind, so that your, your heart is transformed, your mind is renewed, your perspectives are changed. The very essence of this program is the, pos is the possibility that the Lord will, by His Word and by His Spirit, stretch us to a place where, you know what, a spirit man a, escapes through the bondage to the flesh and it begins to soar to the heights the Lord has ordained. Men and brethren, that is why we say be open. Don't come clutching at what you used to know religiously. What you used to know religiously may have been the reason why you are still where you are. Be open so that the Lord will open your eyes. The Lord will do some deep work in you. He says if you know the truth, the truth shall set you free. It is the truth that sets free. And it's the truth by His Spirit that transforms. So remember what Paul told Timothy, I mean told the Corinthians in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 27. But I keep under my body and bring it unto subjection, lest that by any means when I preach to others, I myself should be a castaway. Everyone, teachers, mentors, every one of us, the you know, vision holders, as well as the students, we all commit ourselves. We are going somewhere. We want to see him on that day. We want to cross the pearly gate. We want to make it into the full manifest phase of the kingdom. And we don't want anything to trip us over. So as you've come, be open to be transformed. And Pastor Grace and I are student number one for each year, because each year we take a fresh set of courses. You know what? The courses we take, it's only at the end only highest any year is a quarter of the courses we have in the curriculum so if it means a quarter it means if you finish the school if you finish the school of ministry or the master class that is these people finishing this month or so let me tell you something you I see nothing yet. There are still three quarters of truth you have not encountered. So it doesn't make sense to say, oh, I did the 2020 master class. You can also enroll for this one. I did the 2017 master class. You can also enroll for this one. And you can refresh yourself for the courses you learned before. You can also learn new things. Because there are about 50 something in all. That's the correct listing. If you look at all the Digging Deep series and all that is in the listing, it's about 50 something courses in all. And each year, the much we can take is just a certain number. And now that we are even standardizing things, we want to make sure that people are not overloaded beyond what they can do. And so, what do we do? We bring the courses. We want to check them, how much credit load for each of them, so that we make sure that you can only do what is necessary in a given year. And we say to you, keep your heart open, keep your mind open, and let the Lord do a walk of grace in you, then you are on a safe ground. The number 11 thing I want to say is that you want you to explain, I want to explain particularly why we use the Hebraic names of the Most High. Over the years of studying the Bible and studying history and studying the church history, we discover that a lot of errors happened in the early church. 
for instance, the early church at a time refused to go the way that Jesus, the master builder of the church, uh, the, I mean the owner of the church, gave the master plan to Paul and say in Ephesians 4, 11, he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers who will collectively impact and build up his church. It didn't take very long. You know what the early church did? They left the fivefold and chose the bishopric. And it was biblical. The bishopric is biblical. But they chose it for glory, for honor, for the robe, for the prominence. And certain things began to come in. In the same way, because the, 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 the Romans conquered the Jews and were ruling them when Yeshua was born, they didn't want anything to do with the Hebrew, Hebraic foundation of the gospel. So there were a number of things that happened. In those days, the language that was used to write the things, the Romans did not destroy the Greek language when they took over as the empire, preeminent empire. What the Romans did was to supplant and then they allowed the Greek language to be the language of literature and history and all that. And so most of the Bible initially was written in Greek and being an alien language from the original language, which is the Hebraic Aramic language, what happened is that the Greeks couldn't write anything about things like the names of Elo him in Greek. And then when the Mystery Babylon took off in the 4th century, Mystery Babylon as a system had a very vested interest in making sure that people did not know the connection of the gospel to these Hebraic roots. And so what happened? Everything referring to the names Elohim revealed himself to Moses, you know, as Elohim, you know, the I am who I am, as, you know, Yahweh, the Holy One of Israel, all those things were blotted out in the process. Even things like the name of Yeshua, which the Father gave to him, you know what happened? The Greeks couldn't pronounce Yeshua. So what did they do? They wrote it as Yoshus, I-O-E-S-U-S, Yoshus. And they couldn't pronounce Hamashiach. So how did they write it? They checked what was the name Hamashiach. Hamashiach means the anointed one, the Messiah to come, Hamashiach. Okay, so they wrote it Yoshus Christus. And that went on. And from there, when English took over from the Greek as a preeminent language, they simply translated Yoshus Christus to Jesus Christ. Is it okay? Fine, it's okay. Translations do happen. But how about calling him by his original name? How about calling the Most High, not just by a generic God, but Yahweh, Yahweh, our Father? How about calling him Elohim, the God that is us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, three in one, that single word that describes it? So, by the grace of the Lord, it's not a requirement, it's not compulsory calling by what you are comfortable, but want to explain so that when I, when I use those phrases, you understand where I'm coming from from. I'm not part of any sacred group, uh, sacred names movement that says other people can know, but you cannot call him any other name. No, you can call by whatever name, by whatever tongue, but I just want you to explain where I'm coming from. Number 12, everything we're doing is by grace. Everything is by grace. That's why we don't do comparisons. That's why we don't, we have no room to boast. First Corinthians 4, 7, for who make it thee to differ from another? And what hast thou that thou didst not receive? If thou didst receive it, why dost thou glory as if you have not received it? So you who have come into the class, as the Lord begins to unpack some very deep spiritual truths to you, make sure you don't get heady and high-minded and proud and arrogant or begin to throw it like firecrackers or begin to attack people left, right, and center. Make sure that's not your attitude. It's all by grace that you are here. It's all by grace. And let that grace sustain us. And what can you do? We can do something simple. When the truth you receive every morning, every day. You know what? You can 
fulfill Psalm 68 verse 11, the Lord gave the word. Great was the company of those that published it. So as the word is released, you receive it. Don't keep it to yourself. Share it. Whether the ones Pastor Grace teaches, the one I teach, share it. Share the video. Share your timeline. Share in groups you belong to. Send to people, you know, who you know, personal friends. Send them by inbox, by messenger. Send them by WhatsApp. Any way you can, keep furthering this. And brothers and sisters, I want to say this to you. That the Lord wants us to truly come to a place where we understand and have some basic things that hold us together. These 12 we share today, you know, by way of assignment, we'll ask you which of these 12 principles ministered most to you. Just write it down. And please, if you have not introduced yourself in the class, introduce yourself. And if you're if you admitted in the Facebook classroom, you know what? You can write down your name, that this is your full name, if it's different for your Facebook name. This is where you are located, you know, in which nation and in which city and nation that you are located so that others will know. Every year we have an international class, a global class. We want to know people from different areas and by the grace of the Lord, then write any of these 12, which ones truly touched you, you understood. But let me say this. We have this disciplinary process that will be on. If anybody is in the class and messes up and does things that are seeming, and you know that, please contact the director of studies or your mentor and share your concerns with them and leave it with them. Such a person will be invited, have a chat with. If a person is repentant, well, that thing can end there. But if the person is recalcitrant or continues, then sudden further disciplinary action can take it. And we say this to us, let's all cooperate to make this happen happen tomorrow by the grace of the lord in the morning 10 o'clock we'll begin with prayer on daybreak with the king and then about quarter past two, uh, 10 or 20 past 10 we'll begin to teach lesson number three in our own orientation classes remember i teach sunday evenings monday tuesday wednesday then two on thursday pastor grace teaches on friday morning teaches on saturday morning sunday morning and sunday afternoon four and so with that we have the week covered out. We say to everyone, if you enroll for the master class, don't just come to class and go. Come to class so that you can earn the right marks for being in class. Then it will help you to be able to be prepared. Then secondly, we ask you every day, have a quiet time, a dedicated time, one hour each day either morning or evening or split it into two early morning late evening you can split it into two to study one chapter of every book we are studying and in the orientation lesson take this orientation lessons and prepare them and when we begin to study the former books that's the way you study or you can go to youtube true kingdom life channel pastor grace digging deep series you can study one video a day if you will do this you will get the proper impartation of the truth that the lord wants to use to transform the body worldwide there are four types of churches the church of satan the third church of matthew chapter 13 the church of humans the one paul said their god is their belly in philippians chapter 3 verse 17 to 21 their god is their belly you know people are doing abc churchianity to generate more attendance build more buildings make more money the god is their belly that's the church of men number three is a hybrid church mixture of all and then the fourth one is the church that Yeshua Hamashiach himself is building. The kingdom church, it is a river of living water, not a pond of brackish water. It is a hatchery of gift and calling. It's not a morgue where people's destiny are entombed. Now, what we are here to do is to show you how to be part of that church that Yeshua is building, what he said in the word, how he said he wants to do it, so that you can understand and the Lord will use you to bring reformation where you are. We love you and by the grace of the Lord, we want to do this together so that the Lord will be pleased 
as, traf as the kingdom culture is brought into the airtream and supplants worldly culture, religious culture, and the grace of the Lord is with us all. Father in heaven, the great I am who I am, we bow before you. We say, have your way by your spirit. Let this word produce fruit, fruit that will be abide, and let your name be glorified. Thank you, Father. In Yeshua Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen.